Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, the May Day meeting of the Pipeline Authoring SIG. Uh, I'm Liam Newman. Uh, we have a bunch of people on the call. Uh, hopefully, you can see a pretty sizable list here. Uh, we are recording this meeting, and if you don't want to be recorded, please drop. Also, a reminder that this meeting is governed by the uh, Community uh, Code of Conduct for Jenkins. So be awesome to each other, and uh, let's get going. As an overview, we have a couple of open items. Um, Marky had to drop to head off to handle some things. Uh, we'll see him, talk to him next week. Uh, we'll have uh, a presentation on Pipeline as YAML, and also uh, a multi-pipeline job idea from Stephen Foster. Uh, and we have some docs for that, cool. So uh, the open items, the Jira queries are going to remain open. I, uh, I got buried under some uh, build issues at work. So I'll come back to that. Marky got the PR uh, landing page merged, I believe. Let me go look at Jenkins IO. Is it on the roadmap, is that right? Mark, maybe you can tell me. I do know that it is on the roadmap, the pipeline okay. YAML item. All right, and the roadmap is, remind me. No, uh, yeah. Liam, it's kind of tough to get to right now. You scroll oh. to the bottom in governance. Uh, <laughs> Structure and governance under the project, project column. <laughs> Structure and governance under the project column in the blue section at the bottom. We haven't ah, intentionally okay. highlighted it yet. Structure and governance. Got right. it, okay. And then at the bottom, oh, where do we put Okay, it? then you'll see roadmap third link down. There it is, thanks. Yeah, we will highlight it, it's still draft. Right, all right. So as you can see, we have the, the pipeline is YAML currently in incubation, but it has been released. The plugin is downloadable. So uh, let's uh, move on to that. Uh, the Pipeline is YAML plugin has been worked on by Aitun Specken. Um, he's on the call with us here. And uh, I will bring up the doc for that. So that was a meeting you guys had yesterday. And okay, Aitun, do you uh, want to talk about this or what do you want to tell us? Uh, sure. Uh, also, I can do some uh, little uh, demo about this. So, Question as is. the name says, it's purpose pipeline is YAML. Uh, I just released version 0 0.2 last week. It is in the still incubation period. Uh, we have uh, some issues that we want to implement before going to version one. So, this was the uh, another topic that we talked yesterday. And after that, probably it will be released as uh, version one and it will end its uh, incubation period, okay. probably. So, uh, also I, yesterday I learned that uh, this meeting is being done every week. So I will try my best to join as much as possible and try to uh, introduce pipeline ASML because uh, I, implemented something, but also I want to get feedback from the users because uh, there are very different kind of usages of declarative pipeline and like real life examples. Sure. So it will be nice to uh, people try and uh, like provide feedback about the usage for improvement points, maybe some uh, other ideas. So I am open to all suggestions. Uh, so whenever you want, I can do a small demo about this. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, I'm not sure. I think I have to make you the host to let you be able to share your screen. So let me give that a try. Um, and let's see here. So I have now uh, made you the host. There you go. Okay. And that means that you should be able to share your screen. I okay. might have to, I might have to like, ah, there we go. Okay, I've stopped sharing and now you can share. Sure. 
Okay. Yeah, it's kind of buried in the 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 menu system. Okay. 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 I hope uh, you all can see my screen. Now we can. Yes. Okay. Great. I'm going to ask you to make your text a little larger, just for um, people to be able to see easily. It's like you're on Linux. Yeah. Sorry, my computer is doing stupid things. Well, it's got a. It, now it's doing video, so it's it's going to take a little longer. Okay, so uh, I don't know why, how can I close this. Okay, so this is the uh, Python ASML GitHub page. Also, you can just access it from the wiki page of Jenkins. Uh, so the idea is very simple. You just put your Jenkins as file YAML file into your project, like the other Jenkins file in declarative pipeline syntax, and when you Create your multi-branch pipeline. Let's de define a multi-branch pipeline here. So I'm going to define it. So I'm going to give my local path. Uh, could you see my black screen right now, or only the browser? Just the uh, web, the browser. Okay. Let me. Well, I can't share my whole screen. I don't know. Anyway. Share one. It doesn't want to share the whole screen on on my either. So yeah. Okay. I can. Ah. Okay. So I will switch it. No problem. So what I have is a local uh, Git repository, just to show the example. So the YAML file is here. So you can just define any YAML format file. Name is not important. So you can just define other names or uh, YML uh, extension. So uh, you will see so much detailed examples in the plugin page. So I just created some simple example about that. We start with the pipeline key. Uh, so this is the overall structure of the pipeline. We need to define this key. Uh, then we can just start, uh, define agent with node definition, with any, with none. So the usage is very similar to what we have in the declarative pipeline. So uh, I just tried to keep it very similar to what we have in the current thing. So we have the another environment definition. So it is again similar to what we have in the declarative pipeline. We define our environments as key value pairs. Then we have the options part. The uh, the good part of this pipeline do is uh, it do not implement every step or every option post other things that is, which is created in the Jenkins declarative syntax pipeline. So if you want to add another options to your pipeline, what you can do is that you can easily go to the pipeline syntax page. Oops, sorry for that. You can select a vector to pipeline and you can select options, parameters, whatever you want. So every defined option in here can easily work with the pipeline ASM. So the the overall idea can, of this Can you uh, show us that? Just go ahead and yeah. do it. Yeah, sure. So, you do that and then generate and Yeah, let's this hmm. I don't know. So as you see, okay. this is the declarative definition. So what I right. do is that I just get the disable configuration builds. Okay. And uh, come back to my YAML file and just edit as another line. So as you see, this pipeline just uh, creates the structure or the meta structure of the 
Jenkins Declarative Pipeline as YAML. So the, all the steps is already defined in the Jenkins itself can be used. Another example here that we can see, we define stages down there and then we start our defining our uh, e stage e under the stages. So similar to the syntax, every stage has its steps and also we can define the steps as list under the steps key. So also you can see that we can use other steps which are defined in the Jenkins itself. For example, I will change my screen. So if you want to use another step here, what you need to do is that, uh, let's, but it will fail. I need to find something work. Let's do SH, yeah, I don't know, echo, test. So what I can do is that I can just take it and come back to my YAML file and edit as a list, sorry. As a list or as a string. So it will just convert it into normal stuff. For uh, some advanced Groovy scripts, of course, maybe this uh, usage may not fit. So there is another way of using scripts, Groovy scripts in the definition of steps. So it is similar to what we have in the declarative pipeline. We define steps, under that we define scripts, and then we can write our Groovy script under here with multi-line YAML definition. So it will just convert it to normal uh, script block in the declarative pipeline. And also I just wanted to show that we also implemented that post section of the declarative pipeline. So you can also use it. So let me save it. Okay, so I'm copying my file. I'm going to add my local directory here as a project, as a Git repository. And also what I do is that very similar, I just select the mode by Jenkins file as YAML. So again, this is a YAML secret path. Default is this definition and just I click save. It finds Jenkins YAML file. Then we come, and of course it fails. No feed. Now, okay, I need to put it as a sitting. My bad. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's that's the reason because YAML fails because of this comma thing. Can could you do that that sh command as a sh colon and then have the parameters be sub items in there, or is that? Uh, I am planning to do that, but okay. I'm planning just... to work on something like an, a converter, a syntax converter, because okay. I do want I do not want to implement every step in Jenkins, but I right. want to create a rule just for like converting every step into declarative or vice versa. So I'm going to work on that. Uh, but un until that feature, I'm just implemented this way. So can I ask a quick question? So the declarative uh, pipeline engine has uh, alternative parsers. So I'm, I'm curious if, you, if that functionality might already be done. If you weren't, if you haven't uh, dove into the declarative code base, I pasted a link in the in the chat. So oh, okay. Sure. has like a model definition and it has a, a, an existing JSON parser. So I'm wondering if, if you could leverage the existing declarative parsers uh, as that, that proxy for you, right? So at the end of the day, declarative pipelines, just a, a schema 
Uh, I wonder if you could represent the exact same schema through YAML and then leverage declarative's existing parsers to, to execute the pipeline side of things. Okay, I, I know this plugin, so I just work on it, uh, but I will check it because I'm using this model definition as a pipeline def for validating the uh, converted declarative pipeline. So before going to or running the pipeline itself, I just validate it through this class. Mm. I'm going to use it for uh, another feature in the uh, in the pipeline itself. I'm going to implement lately. So I'm planning to implement something converting declarative pipeline into YAML. So it will be much more easier for uh, right. users to like convert the pipelines into YAML itself. So let me go back to browser. And it works. So. Cool. Very cool. Everything is fine. <laughs> Please uh, feel free to uh, let me show the pipeline page. So I just try to document every kind of usage possible. And also with the links here, you can go to the test files, which are also shows different definition types. Well, I didn't want to make the documentation so long. So currently we have all the uh, definitions in the declarative pipeline is also implemented here. Environment options, post tools, when conditions, and also when conditions uh, like sequential when conditions or child when conditions, any of all of something like that. We also have parameters, triggers, stages, and also uh parallel stages is already implemented probably another feature in the next release will be matrix uh, definition of the pipeline uh, so that's all like start or small demo thanks for listening. awesome awesome okay i'm stopping my share so okay. Sounds good. Uh, and you want to give me host back. Of course. And can. the way to do that is to click on my uh, picture and the little uh, dot dot in there. And yeah, exactly. There you go. Okay. Well, the host. Excellent. So I will be glad if you all can just uh, use this YAML plugin in your daily life, life with real life examples. So and also I will be glad if you can provide feedback for the usage before, before going to version one, because after that it will be hard to change the all of the structure. Yeah, it'll be much harder to, to change the basic idiom at that point, yeah. Okay. Well, cool, this is really interesting stuff. Um, so yeah. Um, we, uh, you already put up a blog post about it, right? Or at least there, I saw a tweet. I don't know if I actually saw a blog post. Uh, no blog post yet. Okay. I'm going to like it. Okay, great. So, okay, if I ask a question, well, we've oh, yeah. got iTunes and Steven both here in the, in the <laughs> same group. So Steven, the, the, the templating library that you had created, that you had created and maintained and have cared for, uses YAML as its basis as well, doesn't it? Can you help me understand interactions there yours is is well help help me understand help me con conceptualize this yeah sure so there's some slight differences uh so the plugin i maintain is called the jenkins templing engine the basic idea in a nutshell is that it lets you pull the jenkins file out of the repo and create tool agnostic templated pipelines that can be reused um so instead of you know hard coding that i'm going to use maven for a build and then sonar cube for static code analysis you define uh, a generic scaffold of a pipeline. Like I'm gonna do a build and then I'm gonna do static code analysis, I'm gonna deploy. And then the, the piece that you were mentioning, Mark, is actually a, a configuration file that's that lives alongside your templates that sort of hydrates what the template is going to do, where you can specify what libraries you wanna load. Depending upon the libraries that you load, you get different implementations of uh, that templated pipeline. So that, that's actually a custom Groovy DSL, but you could have a YAML parser for the configuration. So it's a little bit different. The YAML side is for 
a configuration file that then configures your, your templated pipeline as opposed to being the primary driver of what the pipeline is going to do. Got it. Does Thank that, you. Thanks for sense? the clarification. So the, whereas in, in pipeline is YAML that iTunes has created, the YAML file is specifically defining the, 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 the what will would conceptually become the Jenkins file. It's defining the pipeline outright. Yours provides a layer that it's using that as a data file. Thanks. No problem. I am very curious to see if like we can save you a lot of work from having to implement steps in pipeline as YAML on a per option basis by just taking a YAML file and sending it to what declarative already offers from a parsing perspective. So that that functionality is like inherently one-to-one -one because it, it's running through the same engine. So you don't have to do any of the uh, like translation. Maybe declarative could do all of that, that work for you. Liam, are you, do you uh, help maintain the declarative? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I, I was going to say uh, the, the problem there being is that declarative gets down to gets down to the level of the steps being executed and doesn't, um, in, if I remember right, doesn't actually parse those steps. Um, at least, at least not at the, the model level. Once it actually gets down into going from, uh, getting ready to run it in, um, run the job, it'll, it does a bunch of different things, but at the, the model definition level, level, it doesn't actually cover that. Gotcha. I was sort of thinking like the same way Jenkins configuration as code was able to leverage descriptors to support everything seamlessly. I was just hoping that maybe there was a way to do the same thing for, for pipeline chain. You know, now that I think about it, I might be, I might be thinking of that wrong actually. So <laughs> I, I, took, I took a quick look when you linked that JSON parser to try and see, it looks like it does go down into arguments, at least to some extent, it doesn't interpret them. Right. I would, I would say that probably for the YAML stuff, you don't, you don't need to make sure that, I mean, I guess ideally you would like the syntax to be correct, but I would just probably allow arbitrary arguments, at least as a starting point. Yeah, and yeah, let, yeah, that's right. You know, pipeline data bind it itself. You could use descriptors and data binding to implement like syntax parsing and stuff that is correct for every step, but yeah, it'd be a lot more difficult. Yeah, and I, 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 was, I was thinking of the, uh, the script block. So the regular steps, it actually does do that. That's right, so cool, I mean, it's possible. Yeah, and that's why I just wanted to implement this script block because really defining every step model is very hard. So probably maybe I can just create some maybe converters, but trying to implement every model of the step, it's not very really possible. Yeah, no, you might not be able to actually have them modeled, but you could at least have some, uh, use the same underlying structures, yeah. right? Yeah, probably. Cool. All right, I'll see if I have time. Maybe I'll, I'll play with that and see if I can open a PR and we can talk about it if it ends up panning out. If you're open to that, of course, I don't want to overstep. No, no. From what I saw, the, the big, the quick, or the confusing things are basically that step arguments can come as like, you can have one default argument, you can have many unnamed arguments, or you can have many named arguments, and all of those would have different YAML structures, so you have to kind of figure out which one is happening and which one is allowed or not. So right. beware. Unless you just delay failure till execution, right? Like you let, you let pipeline declarative tell you like this doesn't make sense and explode as opposed to trying to do it at the YAML layer. Like you just yeah, parse I mean, it. It, even, a it would be pipeline groovy is what actually does the step instantiation, but yeah. I've had to learn just enough to know some of how this works and I, I've tried to stay as far away as I can. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, moving on, uh, Stephen Foster is also with us here, he, uh, I believe, yes, there he is. Um, and you brought up a multi-pipeline job uh, as an idea here. I was wondering if you wanted to um, talk about this a bit um, and uh, maybe give us a quick introduction for anyone had, uh, on uh, watching the video that hasn't seen. Actually, let me make things larger. 
if there we go. Um, so, uh, Stephen, uh, do you have anything you want to show us, or do you just want to uh, talk about it, and I can run the screen? Uh, sure. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Great. Um, I can talk about it a bit. Um, I guess the the main takeaway is not about the actual syntax or describing the pipeline or anything. Um, it's just drawbacks I encountered and a feeling that what I wanted to do outgrew a single pipeline job and whether or not that was kind of a valid feeling or whether there was any gaps there. So for the example being with the pipeline I have, it's it's quite simple. It just it has a very large number of parallel branches that some of them, most of them are unrelated to each other and they can be grouped by platform that I'm compiling for. Sure. Um, and I started writing it in a single declarative pipeline and kind of immediately found that there would be a big drawback of um, they're all sharing one build history, one kind of test history, and each parallel branch is quite heavy to run in terms of it builds out on loads of nodes and takes up limited number of specific hardware to run its tests and things like that. So what I did was I split it out into um, different jobs that all run together, but Jenkins doesn't really tie them together in any meaningful way. So there's lots of weird navigation problems and history problems that I was identified as a kind of a gap. And your thought is to have what then? To have a... Yeah, so there's a, maybe an idea of a new job type similar to how a multi-branch pipeline generates pipeline jobs based on a given set of source control elements. Um, there could be a job that generates pipeline jobs um, based on some other um, parameters such as like a list of platform names in my case, or um, by detecting certain Jenkins files by some pattern in, an, in a source control. Um, that way it would reduce the number of multi-branch pipeline jobs. So I have uh, about 16 multi-branch pipeline jobs. So they're all wasting time um, doing the same indexing and things. Um, and you need some way to navigate between them for the same commit, which is awkward. Um, so you could arrange it in a hierarchy where you have a multi-branch pipeline job that generates multiple pipelines and you could navigate between them much easier that way. Okay, I mean, so this has been something that I, I, mean, I don't know if it's been brought up specifically, certainly not in this group, but um, I've, I've heard it discussed kind of and I've sort of thought about it a bit, um, where it's there's the classic Jenkins freestyle jobs have this concept of, hey, I have a job, it calls other jobs. And that was how Jenkins achieved parallelism for the beginning, you know, five, six, 10 years, right? Um, and then we, uh, we went to pipelines and there was this different sort of idiom. So what you're proposing sounds a bit like a move back in the direction or melding of those two worlds again, where it's like, okay, we, we have more of a concept of separate jobs again, and we build on that structure. Um, it does, and I guess there, it's a kind of a judgment call um, based on where you see the point of, has this work outgrown a single pipeline or not? Um, for me, it's because the, the branches, the parallel branches, they're not really related. They can be grouped into target platform, but, um, they don't really, they don't matter to each other that much. Well, I think that happens with, with a lot of, uh, I'm seeing that, especially with um, hearing, looking at questions from people on matrix build, for example, there's a lot of, uh, I need this built on this combination of platform and, and uh, uh, hardware or whatever, and, and uh, or some settings. And those individual things aren't, I mean, they're related, but they're not, um, for you, I think they're, you're saying that, that for you, they're even more unrelated, but they are the same basic structure. 
Right. So it, like, so what's the primary driver here? Like, I, I think I understand what, what the goal is. And I, I think it makes sense. I'm trying to understand if, if the primary driver here is like ease of configuring all these different pipelines or if it's around like build history so you can better navigate. Like is the, is the ask, is one way to phrase the ask that we would want to take the matrix block more or less and then turn that into its own sort of job factory that instead of creating multiple, you know, flow executions for a single pipeline, that's probably not the correct like CPS terminology, but instead of creating, you know, a bunch of parallel threads in the same job, being able to take that and then say, okay, let me create sub jobs that are going to execute the pipeline that, that was described. So that, so I get the benefits of like build artifacts per, per thread. And I get the benefits of like different, you know, histories per, for each thread. Yeah, that's essentially it. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't thinking necessarily of, um, using a part of declarative to generate the jobs. Um, uh, there was just kind of a question mark there about how you generate these jobs. Um, so yeah, like the simplest possible way would just be supply a list of jobs you want to generate. But if you did, if you put it in a declarative pipeline and they all use the same Jenkins file, that would be actually a really good way of uh, splitting that up. Gotcha. I did post on that thread my obligatory i maintain the, the jenkins sampling engine and it, it's similar but it's not quite the same so i might retract my like this this might do a lot of what you ask so what what jte does is you from one jenkins file template jenkins file you can create multiple jobs based off the same jenkins file that are a little bit different right so it, there might be some synergy there around like here's a templated workflow plug in the parameters for different platforms, and then we're going to create different jobs based upon that. But I don't think it's a one-to-one. -one. I don't think the goals are the same necessarily. Uh, may I ask something? Sure. sure. Yeah. Uh, so I, uh, the, the scenario you define is quite similar to what organization folders provide. So did you ever try them or what is the difference if you try it, what is the difference or the uh, the things that you couldn't achieve with the organizational folder? Hmm. So, uh, I mean, I think the thing that we, we run into, I'll, I'll, sorry, Stephen, I'll just jump in here real quick. The, the thing that we run into here in, in a bunch of cases is that you have subtle differences in what it is that you're templating off of or what you want done. Um, the The thing that, first pops into my head when you talk about this structure and also the, the org folders and that kind of thing is that we don't currently have the concept of a, of a folder that is a job that runs and yet also has children, right? It's not right. So that, I mean, that, that's one difference I can spot right here where, where kind of what you're, what you're looking for, what the, the, behavior that you're kind of describing is like, hey, I want to run this, this, uh, this job and have it sort of automatically generate and run these other jobs um, that are its children. Correct, like the way we currently do that is um, we have a separate declarative pipeline that all it does is kicks off like 15 other jobs and waits for them and reports kind of brings all their statuses together into one. Right. But then they start getting out of sync. If you want to start a particular job again because of some transient error or something. Right. Hmm. Okay. So you also have the concept, what you'd have there is the concept of, okay, I have this top level job and then, I, oh, this, so they, they really are, they, so you know, I want to rewind that, rewind that one because there's a transient error, but I want to keep it in this group of jobs. Yeah, exactly, because it's it would be very expensive in terms of just resources and occupying agents and things to run everything again. Um, that was the so, main motivation. So, so you're almost talking about like a, 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 what you're talking about there would be almost something that you'd have to create a, but when you start a new run of this particular pipeline, it creates a folder in which it puts all the things that it created. So each one of them would be its own, like, because you want to be able to run, rerun individual items in there. Those are, 
the only way we have to group those right now would be to put them all in a folder. <laughs> mm. um, I mean, that, I mean, th these are all. This, I'm just spitballing. Yeah, um, I, I do keep them within as few jobs as I can. That makes sense. So, mm. if like a platform has four parallel threads in it, I'm okay with running all of those again. I don't want to go to that detail myself, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see what you mean about having to kind of manage all these. Well, I'm not saying I'm actually not saying that you have to manage them. It's more like, what would the how could how could we leverage the current sort of idiom uh, to to do what it is that you're talking about better? Um, I feel like it's like what we would expose would be a properties layer at that top, and then it goes in and like automatically creates parameterized jobs beneath it and when you run the top job it just passes input parameters to the the sub jobs that it that it automatically created right so from one mm. uh job definition you're able to then basically end up with a combinatorics of of sub jobs and then it instead of you telling it what parameters to run each job with it knows that you want to run them all so just automatically mm. pass these parameters to everything okay and the difference here between this and say an org folder is that the org folder is working off of GitHub, a different data set, right? Yes, it's kind of more more generic or arbitrary. Um, you know, yeah, like... yeah. And this could all be for one job, right? Like for one repo. So I could have my app in a repo and I wanna run it on like six different jobs for different platforms. So I, the difference there to me is that like organization and multi-branch jobs are assuming that like, your job is your repo. And this is sort of like, I could have an arbitrary number of jobs coming from a single repo. Or even separate repos for that matter. Yeah. Maybe, it I don't know. It inverts the hierarchy of, like with an org organization job, I think that's above the multi-branch. Yeah. But this would flip that so that the multi-branch would be the top level still. Hmm. Interesting. My comments are definitely not pushed back. I think I'm just trying to wrap my head around. Yeah. How this would how this would work. So uh, actually, I wanted to ask uh, maybe Devin or or some of the other people on the CloudBees pipeline team that are here um, that have as much or uh, plenty of experience in this area. Um, so the the question I have is that like how does this? Hmm, I don't have as much uh, history with the. Uh, discussions that it went into pipeline and some of these things. I have some sort of user level view of it from my history. Um, if there's some reason why we chose why why the the design of of one of a single job as your pipeline sort of uh, was chosen, and if there's a, I mean, if there's a reason why we shouldn't why having this as a as a as a, as a possibility is not is it would be a problem, I guess. And unfortunately, that those decisions were made before my time. Okay. Yeah, I don't think any of us were there for the history. I mean, I guess it's just that it, that's how freestyle jobs were, and it kind of made sense to do the same thing. I mean, the one thing I will say that seems very similar to me about this is, like, people asking for kind of, like, promotion support and stuff like that in pipelines where they want multiple jobs to really be conceptually part of the same pipeline and have... Um, you know, different levels of promotion and stuff between them and have one trigger the next one. But really, conceptually, they want to all think of that as the same pipeline and have to be visualized together and things like that. Um, this seems tangentially similar to that. So I don't think there's any particular reason that we said, no, don't do this. But yeah. Okay, cool. I understand. I definitely don't know as much about multi-branch history as I do about pipeline so I'm really not sure about that side of things okay I was just wondering if there's any any perspective there um, so I, I guess the the question I have for you Stephen is uh, what 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 do you think the next steps are and it seems like there's there's interest at least it's like well this is this is an interesting idea um, that there's I can think of at least three or four different ways that it could be implemented or how it might look um, and you know, advantages and disadvantages of those, like what's, um, 
what do you, what would you, what's your next step? What would you like to try or um, where do you see this going next? Uh, it's a good question. Um, what I was looking for was a sense of if there was any philosophical pushback and it doesn't sound like it. Um, Mm-hmm. Next steps. So, I mean, okay. So, there's there's people that are that have um, more. Okay, so let me let me. There are people that have more uh, opinions about uh, the pipeline engine and and some of those those things or, or pipeline design. Uh, the and the internals of Jenkins, the, the Jenkins internals aspect of this that aren't part of this meeting. So, we probably want to uh, bring them into that. I. Uh, into the discussion. I would say as, as long as you don't need to, like I wouldn't put this inside of one of the existing plugins. I would create a new plugin to build this sure, functionality. Yeah, yeah. I think as long as you can do that, I don't think there would be significant pushback. I mean, maybe they, they wouldn't like this approach or something, but I think that, you know, like Jenkins X follows this kind of model like we talked about, like it says here. I think it's very, very reasonable in general. I don't think it would require like extreme gutting of like super core pipeline apis if it did i would probably yeah. say maybe not worth the complexity but i mean if you can do it in an independent plugin by all means i think that from like my brief diving into the internals of things it seemed like it could exist on its own layer in its own plugin um maybe with a couple of modifications to or extensions to things like folders i'm not sure yeah that's the my question is is what yeah where this would hook into the existing sort of uh design idioms from jenkins freestyle and pipeline sort of because it's kind of a melding of the two right yeah i you guess know, I it's pretty similar to like a multi-branch job in the sense that it's like a folder and a job itself yeah i am pretty interested in like how do we how do we orchestrate the pipeline api compatibility between all these different things right like we've got the underlying pipeline engine and CPS. And it seems from my understanding that declarative sort of sits on top of CPS. And then the thing that I do for a living sits on top of CPS. And then pipeline is YAML comes in and sits somewhere in that. And then this would also sit there. How do we, how do we make sure that this whole ecosystem is like orchestrated and works together? Does that make sense? I know it's a very hard question without a good answer. I think I'm just, thinking about how do we maintain API compatibility here as more and more frameworks start to sit on top of the pipeline engine. I mean, do you mean like technically, how do we keep things from breaking or like conceptually, how do we keep things holistically making sense? Uh, Probably the latter, right? Like I think all these different pieces I'm talking about are developed in silos without too much, maybe declarative is an exception to that. Like declarative obviously is very closely intertwined with the underlying CPS engine, but like pipeline is YAML. And if this job were to to leverage existing APIs for creating pipelines, the templating engine leverages some of the, the, the script engine, like maybe, maybe I'm not phrasing my question. You know, I, I I think no, we're I think we're following where you're headed. It's just sort of like we're we're trying to clarify what your like which direction because there's different ways to take your your question is is your you, what you're saying though is that it's more a question of how do we keep them all working together, playing to, playing together well. Is that the yeah? How do we keep them playing together well? I'm trying to like phrase this as agnostically as possible without being like. How can I make sure that the plugin I maintain keeps working? Well, right. you know, you, you can always start from there. That's fine. It's, it's okay to be selfish. <laughs> right. So selfishly, I rely on particular conventions of how the pipeline engine works. Um, like, I, I don't, I think that this thing is focused on authoring an experience. I'm curious if like things that live within the pipeline ecosystem need its own conversation between the different moving pieces. Right. So I, I inject functionality into the pipeline runtime to enable templating and governance. You know, if the underlying API for how pipeline works, that that sort of breaks that that layer on top of it. Um, so I'm constantly trying to figure out how do I implement my pipeline plugin in the best way so that it's a it's maintained as a first class citizen as opposed to like something that's duct taped onto the pipeline engine um, without pulling in the same developers that are working on everything, 
right? Like in my best case scenario, I get to sit down with, with you, Devin, and with you, Liam, and we talk about like all these APIs and how everything integrates, but it's not the most scalable model out there and can be yeah. difficult to orchestrate. I mean, I guess like the, the hard reality pessimistic answer, I guess, is that like because everything is so widely used, right? There's minimal changes to most of the core underlying pieces like workflow CPS and Groovy CPS there are bug fixes or minor features, et cetera, but we're probably never going to make really wide sweeping changes to that plugin ever because we can't, because it would break too many things. So like to a large extent, I think that technically it's just like, you know, every change we make, we try and avoid any kind of compatibility issues as much as possible, you know, enhancements. Sure. If it doesn't affect existing things, but in general, I guess we just try and be extremely conservative. That makes sense. I definitely don't want to turn this into like a Stephen asking questions about the thing he maintains. So I think I think that that isn't well, helpful enough for me for now. But, but it's it, I mean, looking at it from the you can start from a selfish perspective, and you're one of the perspectives that needs to be served, right? So that's that's perfectly reasonable. Um, I guess I would say too is like at the end of the day, things like the current implementation of declarative and your templating engine, like they are extremely coupled to Groovy and. CPS and workflow CPS, right? Like that's unfortunate. If we implemented a new pipeline execution engine, those things would just stop working or they wouldn't work with the new engine at all. So like, that's not ideal, but it kind of is what it is, you know? There's no alternative for you to use, you know, just an ecosystem, that's, that's how the ecosystem is today. I will say that, uh, at least selfishly, the thing that I maintain is fairly decoupled, right? I, and this is, this is gonna change, but right now I just inject executable things into the binding that leverage Jenkins pipeline as code. So, you know, if we were to change CPS, you know, there's not too much that changes on the layer I've added to be able to continue supporting that unless like we get away from Groovy. I, I depend heavily on Groovy and some yeah, fancy that, kind of programming that goes on. Yeah, when I imagine, so like the things that I imagine as big changes that would be problematic for the ecosystem would be alternative pipeline engines as in Groovy no longer executes on the master or there is no Groovy at all. It is truly strict declarative, things like those nature. Those would obviously be huge breaking changes for the ecosystem, but I don't really think there's anything we can do to, you know, support those things in advance for most cases. Like a lot of the features are kind of specific to Groovy. I mean, I guess I don't want to get into it too much, right? Like this is about authoring, not so much about engine stuff. I'm happy to talk about engine stuff a lot, but. Maybe you and I could tag up out of band. I'd be interested to get like 15 minutes of your time if, you, if you're ever available. Yeah, sure. Yeah, feel free to email me or whatever. Thank you. Location engine. I'm just taking a few notes here. Um, uh, so let's see here. Uh, Major breaking changes would be if we moved away from that. Yeah, I mean, as long as we have a Groovy engine that runs inside of the master, most things are gonna conceptually be similar, but yeah. anything that changes that would be very significant um, in terms of breaking compatibility. It could offer a lot of interesting new functionality or new features or different user interaction methods, avoid a lot of problems, but uh, it would be, Problem. It would be complex for the ecosystem. There we go. Okay. Cool. Execution. I can type. It'll work. I'm sure. There we go. Um, Okay, cool. So you two can uh, meet up and chat a bit. Um, so Stephen uh, Foster, the I guess the the thing uh, we're coming up on our time here, um, and I guess the the next steps I guess would be there. There doesn't seem to be like a major philosophical opposition to this. Uh, there's questions about like how it would work with other things and how would we, I mean, I, for me, I'm also thinking a lot about visualization right now. So like, how would, how would this be visualized? Would you just use, uh, 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 obviously it wouldn't show up so well in blue ocean or, in, but that's deprecated now. Like how would, what would this look like? Or is that sort of secondary? 
the more you know important question is does it run but like um i think maybe the next steps here are to to try to put together a at least some sort of um, set of ideas either one one proposal for what how you'd want it to work or maybe work with some of the people here to kind of talk about what it would what some possible implementations would look like and uh maybe submit a jep that uh people that uh other people would would uh be able to comment on that understand the jep's not required but it is it's one way of getting more feedback um but it sounds like what you're doing just to, to wrap up the idea it sounds like what you're proposing is something that would be 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 able to work as a independent from the other things um so it wouldn't necessarily be something that you'd have to uh take feedback from other people right <laughs> you could yeah, just yeah. say i want it to look like this and you could go do that and um that i mean that's that's i think you would probably get more uh, more engagement by you know getting some feedback and trying to kind of you know do things together. But um, if if you got a lot of pushback from people that did have a, have a lot of opposition to the this philosophically, you could just kind of go, well, that's your philosophy. <laughs> um, this, yeah, that's yeah. not um, so. No, that sounds like that sounds good. I could definitely do that. Um, it was interesting to get feedback even from just this meeting. It was kind of neat that there was people with different perspectives on the same kind of thing. So yeah. that was cool. All right. Um, I'd be up for more discussions uh, okay. separately or. Well, it's, it's kind of up to you if, uh, what you want that to look like. Um, maybe you reply on the thread and we can sort of, uh, hopefully you'll uh, join us again at this meeting and talk more about it. Uh, you know, sort of, we can have some discussions offline and then uh, bring it here and, and chat about it and sort of uh, present or just sort of, nail down any things that we need to do in real time. Yeah, for sure. Great. All right. Um, all right. That, that is our time for the day, for today. Thank you, uh, Stephen Foster and uh, Atush uh, for coming and showing us uh, new things in pipeline. And uh, the next meeting will be on uh, May 8th, uh, next Friday. So I hope to see you all there. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend.